Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today, we're very excited to share with you the first installment of the brilliant Firefly Recoil, book two of the original series written by Daniel Hines. If you haven't already, be sure to listen to book one of the series, The Brilliant Firefly Reborn, that we released about a year ago. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. The Brilliant Firefly Recoil, Part 1 Chapter 1 The New Normal Jill blocked a punch to her ribs, ducked a roundhouse kick, and then rolled away from the sword as it swept towards her face. You'll have to be faster than that, she said, circling away. My, but we're cocky this morning, Grandpa Jack said, throwing the dull edge practice sword away with a clatter. I was going easy on you, but I see you need a lesson. He turned towards the console where Speck sat, reviewing lines of computer code on one of the monitors. Watch this now, Specs, and maybe she won't beat you so bad next time. Jill shuffled forward, careful to keep her body balanced at all times. Grandpa Jack spread his arms wide and let her come. Jill charged, swinging. He easily dodged her flurry of punches, not even bothering to raise his hands. Is that the best you can do? She faked a low punch and then pivoted and spun, lashing out with a devastating heel kick. At least, it should have been devastating. Instead, Grandpa Jack caught her by the ankle. He was older, past 60, but still freakishly fast and strong. He twisted and Jill sprawled to the ground. Grandpa Jack held the ankle, and after a moment, Jill realized she was beat. She slapped the practice mat in front of her. All right, all right, I tap. I tap! He let her go and retrieved the practice sword. A new villain called Cutlass had been terrorizing Giga City lately, and they had been working on ways to avoid her plasma sword. Grandpa Jack thought the armor should be able to handle the sword, but as he reminded Jill time and time again, better safe than sorry. You're getting better, Grandpa called over his shoulder as he put the weapon away. Both of you. I don't feel like I'm getting better, said Spex, rubbing the fist-shaped bruise along the line of his jaw. Grandpa clapped him on the shoulder. Jill's taller than you, and faster and in better shape. You did well just taking the one punch. It'll take more than a couple months of work for you to catch up with her. She's been taking martial arts lessons for years. You'll get there eventually. Speck smiled a little and seemed to sit up straighter in his chair. He still had a softness about him, but the martial arts training had melted away most of his oversized stomach. Jill, already in good shape to begin with, felt better than ever. She could sprint a mile no problem, same with lifting nearly twice what she weighed. Grandpa had also made her pick up some gymnastics. Jill didn't see the point at first, But a few weeks later, he had thrown her during a sparring session, and she had cartwheeled away, balancing like a cat on the balls of her feet. Altogether, the hard training was making her far more formidable than judo alone ever had. It wasn't a superpower, but it sure felt like one. How's our new security system? Grandpa asked Spex, throwing Jill a towel and mopping the sweat from his brow. It's coming along, Mr. Jays. Speck said, the towering monitors of the supercomputer reflected in his thick glasses. We're locked down tight as it is, but I think I can get it even better with a little more time. We may not have more time, Grandpa replied. The Scarlet King knows Firefly is back, and he won't stand for it. I'm surprised we've even had this long. Sooner or later, the danger will come. We have to be ready. I have to be ready. Jill flushed and looked down at her feet. The guilt was still there, like a twisting snake in her belly. It had been nearly three months since she had taken the firefly suit and stopped Hippopotaman. Three months since the Scarlet King had hijacked every cable channel and announced that he, too, would now return. Jill could still hear his dark voice echoing in her mind. Soon, firefly. I am coming soon. She shook her head. Grandpa Jack had forgiven her. She just had to work on forgiving herself. Overhead, the firefly lights swarmed and spread in beautiful patterns, 
their shifting light shining down on spotlessly clean work tables and tools. That had been their first punishment, her and Specs, cleaning up the Firefly bunker. Grandpa Jack, in Firefly's retirement, had left half-finished projects and half-drunk cups of coffee on every table. Now, with the Scarlet King back, all the space was needed for upgrades to the suit. Sharkskin, Grandpa Jack's black market tech supplier, had been busy getting him new gear. All right, you two, Grandpa said. Good work this morning. Now get your butts in gear or you'll be late for school. He settled in at the computer as Specs and Jill gathered their bags and headed up the elevator. Jill's mom had found a job as an emergency room doctor at a nearby hospital. It was mostly overnights, so the trio had taken to training in the early morning, before she got home from her shift. You do your computer science homework? Spex asked as the elevator ground to a halt in the barn. Yeah, not sure about my code, though. Maybe you can take a look at it for me during study hall? Sure thing, Spex said as they plodded through the fields towards the bus stop. As long as you'll take a look at my engineering work. That's a deal. Jill said, smiling. She didn't hate school the way she had when she was younger anymore. Grandpa Jack had pulled some strings and gotten her and Specs placed into the advanced science program, so the work was actually interesting. Plus, Specs was in all of her classes. They chatted about their work on the new Firefly systems while waiting for the bus. They were under strict orders not to discuss it at school, so they got it out of their systems while they could. A few minutes later, the long yellow school bus pulled up, old brakes grinding. The door swung open and Jill felt herself tense up, felt that matchstick of anger inside her flare, fighting to burn away all the peacefulness she was building around herself. It was a hot and queasy feeling. And dangerous. That, too. Don't let them get to you, Speck said, sensing her tension. They're just bullies. Besides, if you break them all in half, your gramps won't let you train anymore. Jill nodded, and they stepped up into the bus. Almost immediately, the voice of Madison Coachman washed over her. She was pretending to whisper, but was doing it loud enough for half the bus to hear. Here comes the freaks, she said, making the little group of girls clustered around her laugh wickedly. Look how big she is. I bet she has to wear her grandpa's shoes. And there's Specs, said her friend Alyssa. Lost 30 pounds and still manages to be fat. Jill clenched her fists, but ignored them. They weren't in her classes, but they lived on the road, and she had to deal with them every day on the bus. Sometimes, when they were all going to Madison's after school, they even got off at her stop. Once off the bus, they didn't even have to pretend to whisper. Jill and Spex took a seat towards the back, well away from the group, but that didn't help much. Jill was looking over Spex's engineering work when a wad of chewed gum was thrown into her hair. She managed to pull it out. She managed to pull it out, but she lost a few strands of hair, and the girls all laughed again. Thankfully, they got to school soon after. Madison and her flock went one way, Jill and Spex the other. One day, I'm going to... Ugh! Jill paused and took a deep breath. Anger lost fights, not won them. At least, that's what Grandpa always said. Going to what? Forget it, Specs. Let's just get to class. Chapter 2. Danger at Last A cell phone began to ring. Jill's head snapped up from the math problem she was working on. There were no phones allowed in class but the ones belonging to the teachers, and even those were usually off. Unless it was an emergency. Mrs. Bradley picked up the phone, said a few quiet words, her face growing more worried by the second. After a moment, she hung up and walked over to the classroom door, shutting it quietly. Class, I'm afraid the Scarlet King has finally made good on his threats from the summer, she said. Reaching up over the chalkboard covered in proofs, she pulled down a flat white projection screen and then turned on the projector. It showed a flat blue screen reading Input Not Found. Specs, would you mind? Specs got up from his seat next to Jill and went to the AV panel next to the teacher's desk. After a moment of tinkering, the screen snapped to the local news station. A frantic reporter was in front of a construction site in Giga City, 
Trying to talk but was being drowned out by the shouts of people around her, jammed so tight the news mic picked up everything, a hundred competing conversations. Walked right through the police! Crushed a Duncan's flat! We only just made it out! Finally, the cameraman gave up on his reporter and panned skyward. There, thirty stories up in the welded steel skeleton of a skyscraper in progress, was a monster. A monster Jill recognized well. It was a barbarian, half muscle-bound flesh and half strange electronic components, a hulking cyborg with sunken eyes, the same one that had stood at the right hand of the Scarlet King on the news all those months ago. The danger had come at last. Roaring, it grabbed a steel support beam in both hands. It snapped the beam in half like Jill would break a pencil, and the top twenty floors of the skyscraper began to tilt away. The metal groaned and then screamed as the other beams tried to bear the weight and failed, wrenching in half one at a time until the entire top, more than 200 feet of skeletal steel, countless tons of metal, tore free and began to plummet towards the crowd gathered below. Oh, oh no, said Mrs. Bradley, trying to shut off the projector and instead ratcheting up the volume. Screams roared from the projector speakers and filled the classroom as the tower top plunged down. The news camera swung wildly as the cameraman tried to get away, leaving it behind. The wild video and screams made Jill seasick. Was this her fault? Would the Scarlet King have stayed in retirement if she hadn't brought Firefly back to life? She closed her eyes and waited for the crash. It didn't come. Instead, the room erupted in cheers. Jill looked up and saw specks beaming. Firefly had arrived. The hero's yellow jets were flared bright, his legs lost in the glow. He had caught the falling tower and was holding it in the air. He was unable to lift the massive weight any higher, but he was able to hold it long enough for the crowd below to get away. Slowly, like a feather drifting back to earth, Firefly lowered himself and set the giant structure of the tower onto the ground. The feed cut out to another camera, this one higher up and a block away. Police helicopters were circling overhead. From this new angle, Jill could see Firefly, could see Grandpa Jack standing in the bones of the fallen tower. He looked up at the monster above, and even at a distance, the camera could pick up the commanding voice that issued from the Firefly armor. Stop this rampage now and maybe we'll go easy on you. No one's died yet, you still have a chance. Surrender! The creature above sneered down. There was something vaguely familiar in his twisted face. Of course, he was a creation of the Scarlet King, and he had a style all his own. I am barbarian! The creature roared back. I am the Baron of Battle! the Sultan of Skirmish, the creation of the Scarlet King himself, and I do not surrender! Barbariad reached over his shoulder and drew an enormous war hammer, nearly six feet of black steel with a flat scarlet head. He hefted it in both hands, the wind from the helicopters above blowing the long hair that streamed from the human half of his head. Jill sat rigidly, watching the screen. Everyone else in class was doing the same, even Mrs. Bradley. Firefly shook his head and then his jets fired, encasing his legs in the golden glow of energy. You asked for it. With a blast of light, he rocketed upwards, blasting up to where Barbariad waited, more than 300 feet above. As he climbed, Firefly unleashed a blast of energy from his fist cannons. It sizzled across the open sky and hit Barbariad in the chest harder than any bullet. It burned a hole through a layer of leather armor, and that was it. The metal beneath wasn't even scuffed. The creature smiled and then leapt from the shattered top of the skyscraper. The two met in the air a hundred feet over the devastated tower top. Firefly moved like liquid speed, flowing upward and preparing to punch. But somehow, Barbariad was faster. He brought the hammer down as he fell. The giant scarlet hammerhead took Firefly square in the chest and sent him crashing back down to earth. Like a blazing comet, the hero fell, smashing into the tangle of steel below with an earth-shaking boom. No! 
Jill cried out, screamed out right in the middle of class. Everyone turned to look at her and the spellbinding effect of the video was broken. No, no, no! Mrs. Bradley unplugged the projector and turned to Specs. Specs, would you please take Miss Jays to the nurse? She whispered as Jill shook with fear and rage. I understand she lost her father to a similar accident and may need some time. Jill, I'm sorry. Truly. Spex stood up and led Jill away by the arm. Once they were in the hall, Jill shrugged off Spex and ran to her locker. Inside, she found her phone and turned it on, quickly bringing up a live stream of the same newscast they had been watching inside the classroom. Jill, what do we do? Do you need to go to the nurse? No, we need to get to the bunker, and fast. How? It's only third period. There's no bus. And isn't your mom home? She's going to think we're skipping school. If Jill wasn't so terrified, she would have laughed. Only Specs would be worried about being in trouble for skipping school in the middle of a supervillain emergency. There's only one thing to do, Jill said, pressing a few spots on her phone. It rang five times before a sleepy voice on the other end answered. Hello? Mom, it's Jill. I need you to come get me. Grandpa Jack's in trouble. To be continued. Thanks for listening.